Welcome to episode five of Phoenix Meets. And today we're in the rather chilly northeast of England, just outside of Gateshead on the southern bank of the River Tyne. This area down the years has been well known for its beautiful architecture, the likes of the Sage Concert Hall and indeed the iconic Angel of the North. But more recently, this part of the world has been known for its pioneering work in demonstrating hydrogen and seeking to see how hydrogen can be used to decarbonise heat across the United Kingdom. Around 22 million homes in Great Britain are fuelled by natural gas, distributing gas over 300,000 kilometres of existing gas network. So it's little wonder that the United Kingdom and other European countries are looking to hydrogen to see what opportunities it can offer to decarbonise heat through existing gas infrastructure. We're going to go inside, have a look about, and to see how hydrogen appliances are being utilised in these demonstration homes. This may look like any other new built property, but today I'm at number one and number two, Highgrove, two semi-detached properties. And the unique thing about these properties is they're fueled entirely by hydrogen. And here to tell me a little bit more about this demonstration project are my friends from Baxi, and Northern Gas Networks. Alex, you're from Northern Gas Networks. You distribute natural gas. What's your interest in hydrogen? So our network is currently used to transport natural gas in the northern part of England. And we've recognised the need to make some change because of the, the climate change crisis that we're currently in. Our network can be used to transport hydrogen and distribute it across the UK. So it's really important to us that we, we sort of move away from fossil fuels and start to move towards something like hydrogen. This is part of the High for Heat uh, project. Tell us a little bit about how long these properties have been up. So these properties were launched in July 2021 and they're here to prove that 100% hydrogen can be used as a domestic fuel, not just for industry and transport. And they're here to educate everybody, not just the industry, general public, everyone can come along and see them to find out what a hydrogen home might look like in the future. And has there been much interest with people through the door? Yes, lots of interest. We are now, we, we tend to be fully booked up in about three months advance, uh, which is amazing. The, the need for knowledge for people who are coming down to see us is always there and there's constantly inquiries about people coming down. And Jeff, you're standing in front of the Baxi hydrogen boiler. Um, would you follow out with me if I said I was a bit underwhelmed? This looks like any other boiler sitting in new build properties right across the United Kingdom. So that's absolutely the intent, Jonathan. So the idea with the hydrogen boiler is that it's very much the same as a natural gas boiler. It's what customers are used to. It looks the same, it fits in the same space, operates the same, and it has the same efficiencies and performance. So to the end user, to the customer, it's a really low disruption option. It's something that they're used to and it's not going to be a you know, big upheaval or a lifestyle change, which some of the other options out there do pose. And in terms of the actual components of a hydrogen boiler, what is different once you get behind that casing? Sure, so we took one of our existing natural gas platforms as the basis for this prototype. So you, you can walk into a plumber's merchant today and buy a Baxi product, which is operating on, on natural gas in this format. So the key difference is with hydrogen is flame speed, the method for flame detection, um, and the safety aspects of flame control within the product. So there's a, quite a lot of cutting edge innovation behind quite a bland you know, appliance boiler box, but essentially it's in, it's in the gas train, the combustion, the control of hydrogen, which is different from a natural gas appliance. The other side of it in terms of the hydraulics, the wet side, the casing and stuff, all very, very similar to natural gas. So it's, it's the combustion side that's got some unique differences to it. And how long has your Baxi team been working on this particular innovation? So we recognise that hydrogen is potentially a big part of the energy transition quite a few years back. Um, so we've been you know, looking at, across our European uh, and worldwide business, you know, different opportunities in different countries. The UK really took a step forward when the High for Heat programme came about. So we've been part of High for Heat from the get-go and we've been working on specifically UK projects for over four years. So we've got in a quite a good ground in an interest in the subject. And you're far too young to remember the old Towns Gas Network that was dotted across the United Kingdom and um, indeed more locally as well. Um, in those days, quite a lot of that was hydrogen. So we're we simply going back to sort of yesteryear. This is not all that new, is it? 
Yeah, I mean, essentially towns, gas, as you say, was, you know, a big, a big proportion of, of the mix was hydrogen. And believe it or not, there's still hydrogen mix happening in Hong Kong today. I mean, they, they use towns gas there now. Um, the difference when you move to 100% hydrogen, there are some, some fairly unique engineering challenges we've had to overcome. So, you know, we mentioned flame speed, you have, you know, flashback and light back mitigation um, and just the control and the, the belt and braces aspects of, of sort of fault proofing the, the appliance. So, you know, there's a lot more work gone into it than an old town's gas appliance for sure. Um, and as well, we've had to adapt it to, to, to work in a condensing fashion, whereas the older boilers were atmospheric in design. And what about the cost of a hydrogen boiler? Sounds very sophisticated. How does that compare with the cost that consumers would be paying for their natural gas boilers? Sure. So when we're looking at prototypes such as this and the things that we're going into the, into the early trials, obviously there's an element of um, you know R and D time and the, 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 the you know the, 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 the soft tooling and such. Once we move to serial production, and we're going to go to market first with hydrogen ready boilers. So that will be a boiler that works on natural gas out of the box, but then can be converted in less than an hour to work on pure hydrogen at the point of a network conversion in the given area. So as one of the four major heating manufacturers in the UK, we've all joined together and, and pledged to, to government that when we're at high production volumes, at zero production volumes, that a, nat a, a hydrogen ready boiler will be comparable price to a natural gas boiler. Okay, so let me get this right. This boiler here, 100% hydrogen. Yeah. The hope is to get hydrogen ready boilers into householders in the near future yes. to operate off blended hydrogen Initially. that can then be upgraded to a hydrogen flow entirely. Uh, time scales of that? Sure. So the, as we film this today, you know, we're at the end of, uh, end of March. We're waiting for a consultation from Bayes from the Department for Business Energy and Industrial Strategy, which will talk to exactly this point of a potential mandate for hydrogen ready boilers. So it's looking likely that we might see 2026 as, as a, a regulatory line in the sand that all, all, all boiler cells must be hydrogen ready from this point. Um, we as a business have committed to 2025, so all of our products that we sell in the UK will be compatible with low carbon fuel from 2025. So, either electricity or in this particular case hydrogen ready. And Alex, you've had over a thousand people through the door over the last eight or nine months. What are people's reactions to what they see here, particularly consumers? What do they feel about the change to hydrogen? Going back to what you said before, everyone sort of leaves a little underwhelmed because the whole point is that nothing is different here. People come with a lot of questions, um, especially those who aren't in the industry, who don't understand the sort of the, this side of it. Um, and when they leave, they, they, they leave a lot more relaxed and sort of, well, everything's got to be exactly the same. I'll wait for hydrogen to come. And they can see from coming in, seeing the likes of the boilers, the cookers and the fires, that nothing is actually any different. They're all the same size, if not smaller in some cases. And, you know, it, it's people leave with a very positive outlook on it, which is what we want. And of course, one of the big benefits of natural gas down the decades has been its versatility in terms of it does your heating, does your cooking, does your uh, natural gas flame fires. Can that be done with hydrogen? Yes, so we're obviously stood in front of the backseat boiler here. Um, we, I am stood in front of one of our hydrogen cookers um, with a hob and oven, and we do have hydrogen fires in the properties as well. I use these properties as regular as I can, not just for demonstration, I do try and use them as if someone was living here. Um, I can confirm the oven works exactly the same and the heating comes on exactly the same, radiators warm up, it's just what you need from a normal living house I suppose. We've just come from the Hydrogen Homes project in Low Thornley, which is looking at the future of domestic heating uh, fueled by 100% hydrogen. But we're now going into Winlayton, a little village just outside Gateshead, which is one of the first villages in the United Kingdom, which is enjoying a hydrogen blend, 20% hydrogen mixed into the existing natural gas infrastructure. And Alex is going to take me into the village to meet some of the residents to see how they're getting on with their hydrogen blend. Okay, here in uh, Winlayton with four uh, local residents, we've got Vivian, uh, we've got Ronnie, we've got Frank, and we've got Bibba. And uh, we're here talking about all things hydrogen, would you believe? Um, just before we kick start, have you all been from around this area for the last number of years? Well, I've been the longest. I've been in, actually in this house, in this complex, I've been 27 years. 
Before natural gas then, what would you have come through, sort of coal fires? Not here, but previous to that one, where I lived previously, yes. So you've went from coal to town's gas, to natural gas, and now you're enjoying the benefits of 20% hydrogen blend. So how did that come about? How were you approached? Who came to talk to you? And what did you think when people started talking about blending hydrogen into the gas network? Um, we got um, a phone call um, of British Gas and Northern Gas to like say, look, we're going to be putting a blend in. And we had been picked, like this little part of Winlayton. Mm. There was only 670 homes that actually had it plus like the school. So the us were like, you know, like, can we come and talk to you about it? Can we have a few meetings with you? Which they did. Um, they've showed we're down at the new houses that they've, they've actually built. Really um, impressive, isn't very it? Very impressive, yeah. Once we actually got it in, they didn't even notice. A lot of them didn't notice, but only a little village. Yeah. And to think that they picked us. So, Alex, we're now in a residential area of Wynn-Leighton. Tell us a bit about the project and how gas and hydrogen is actually blended into these properties. We've got all the blending equipment down on our low Thornley gas site, which is where we blend the 20% hydrogen with the natural gas. So the, the residents are actually receiving an 80-20 mix of natural gas and hydrogen. We actually blend the gas down on our site at Low Thornley, which is about half a mile down the road. We've got all the blending equipment there and the hydrogen on site. And what we do is we inject that hydrogen into the gas supply that is coming up to Winlayton and to the residents who are receiving the blend. It's all done on our site down just down the road. So all these properties, around 670 of them, are getting 20% hydrogen, 80% natural gas. So how does that impact their appliances? Have they got to change boilers or change appliances? Absolutely not. So everything that we have now, so our current boilers, our current cookers, meters, they all take the blend without any change. They can all take up to about 23% hydrogen. So we cut that at 20 um, and they don't actually have to do anything different and they're making a change to climate change. They're reducing their carbon emissions by about 7% by accepting the blend that we're giving them. And I know this area has a real rich sort of steel industry history. What sort of reaction do you get from residents who are now part of the future in terms of being the very first project to inject hydrogen into the network? What sort of reaction do you get from them? They're all incredibly proud like you've just said it's a big industrial area it's something that we're very, this very proud of in the northeast it's just such a big thing for everybody and i said it before they don't actually need to make a change to be part of this and that just it's just helps people want to be involved in it, it has well. certainly put the area on the map you know as we were coming through people are now used to this sort of drama of following the very exciting story of hydrogen blend yeah. Um, in terms of the 10 month trial that uh, is underway at the minute, what happens after 10 months? Um, what, what, what is planned for the future of the High Deploy project? So the project is due to finish in June time. Um, after that we'll collate all the evidence from the findings that we've got from the last 10 months. They'll be sent off to the government to review and then hopefully by the end of next year they'll have made a decision. And is that how your team in Northern Gas Network see this sort of transition that it starts with a 20% blend into areas like this? and then lifting it up over a period to 100% hydrogen? Absolutely. This is definitely the next step for everyone, wider scale, not just in the UK, but around the world, before taking that full step onto 100% hydrogen. Exciting times ahead. Really exciting.